Hi Aquarius, welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. What the hell is their deal, man? Let's find out, shall we? So we're gonna see the mask that they wear, but who they truly really are. Hopefully it's good things, you know, but we don't know. We're gonna put out whatever we pull out. We're gonna start with the archetype deck, and then I've got, I can't remember the name of this tarot deck. I really wish I could. It's a beautiful deck. It's not the heaven and earth tarot, but somehow it's something similar to that. I don't know. You know, this is what it looks like. <laughs> We're gonna do that, my friends. We're gonna do that. We're gonna find out who they really are, the mask they hide behind, why they hide their true selves, how this affects your relationship, advice for you, an outcome. Should you follow this advice? Well, this deck is being fussy, aren't you? All right. All right, Aqua Babies, let's get into it. I just spent, what did I spent, I spent a, a, good, a good hour and a half with my little Pisces friend. She is little, she's got, she got a big spirit. Sitting out, chatting, relaxing in the heat. It's so hot here. Well, for us Canadians, it feels hot. For some reason, I just tapped into someone who watches me from Arizona. So <laughs> where you are, be like, Cindy, you don't know heat. And I don't. This heat is enough for me. It's like 30 degrees. There isn't even any humidity. It's 30 degrees Celsius. All right. I feel like, okay, I'm going to say right off the bat, I feel like I might be reading somebody in the shadow here because with these cards, there's a light in the shadow, right? Um, something told me, as I was shuffling, before I started pulling, putting the cards down, to look at all of them before I determined if we were in the light or the shadow here, or if we we're going back and forth. I'm going to tell you by your cards, like how this affects you, particularly with the advice for you. I think we're dealing with someone in the shadow. Because how this reflects, how this affects your relationship is like beggar. And then advice for you is to be a shapeshifter. And then what does that advice take you to? Um, God, benevolence. Benevolence, compassion, recognition. So the easiest way for me to go here too is like when you're getting advice, you're going to get advice in the light because I'm working with divine guides. So they're not going to tell you to do something that compromises your soul or your spiritual um, sovereignty or integrity. So to do anything in the shadow, advice would not be that. Right, projecting any image that serves your well personal agenda in the moment. It's interesting. I'm going right to the tarot. <laughs> so I'm going right, we're going right to the tarot with this one, and then I'm going to look at it. I'm going to say, like on the surface, it looks like to me that this person is always taking from Peter to pay Paul, or yeah, uh, what serves their agenda. This person, it looks like possibly kind of works agendas. And it also, um, they make it look like they're trying to do better by others. They're trying to do good, kind things to others. Uh, well, let me see. It's coming out at the bottom with two kings, the king of cups and the king of wands. Okay, there's two things that I'm really, there's this damsel card at the bottom. And then the, why they hide their true selves is the femme fatale. All right, I'm going to start talking through it with you. Okay, who they really are. They've came up with the mediator. If this is in the light, it's a gift for negotiating fairness and strategy in personal and professional life. Respect for both sides of an argument. If it's in the shadow, this person negoti is negotiating with an ulterior motive or hidden agenda, either personally or professionally. There's the Knight of Wands, the Ten of Swords, and the Ace of Cups. I'm going to keep going. The mask they hide behind is the Servant. In the light, delight in serving others with a free and loving heart. In the shadow, using a lack of money as an excuse not to move forward with life. 
See, because there's something about that that if I wanted to look at both of these, like just, you know, a damsel in distress, the femme fatale, if we look at the shadow of that, inappropriate use of sensuality, attachment to money and power. And then the shadow of damsel, which I think the shadow of both of these is what most people attribute um, these archetypes to is waiting for a knight to provide for you seduction by romantic illusion. Because of the tarot cards, like there's a sense here, there's two ways that I feel like this is that this is being read. And one is I feel like either this is um somebody that you know or that you are somehow connected to that is freeing themselves from this energy okay so it could be that or you know this person and you're dealing with it and it's in this energy i really feel like something's not right well and here's the other thing the seven of swords and this looks like look at this the Seven of Swords, this is in why, okay, the mask they hide behind. Seven of Swords, the Page of Wands, and the Three of Cups. There's something really uncomfortable about, like, the imagery in that, and even, like, just what's going on. I mean, it's, it's as the Tarot of the Seven of Swords, something is covert, something is sneaky, something is hidden. Um, somebody's trying to, to do something here. And what I want to say, though, is it feels like it has something to do, like, trying to get around... What I would describe as a feminine energy, it's all over here. It's the damsel in distress. The reason, like, why are they, the, the femme fatale? So, like I'm saying, so you're either dealing with someone who's trying to kind of, like, free themselves from this energy or they're dealing with it in some manner. And this is to help you kind of understand maybe their situation or it's somebody that you're dealing with specifically. I know I've said that twice, so I'm just going to leave it at that because I'm really picking this up as a shadow. And then just see how, right, if this is somebody that you know is dealing with this and trying to kind of untangle themselves from it, this is the story. And if it's this person, this is the story. Okay, so I'm going to go into the shadow. Who they really are, this person is negotiating with an ulterior motive. That is written all over here with this energy. Um, the Knight of Wands, the Ten of Swords, and the Ace of Cups. Somebody here has people kind of like in their hand. You see like this little, per it's looking at this little person in his hand. Um, and then there's another person in the shadows. It's like, not sure, what are you talking to them about? Oh, you know what this is bringing up to me? I'm watching on Netflix, it's uh, Roman Emperors. And, um, oh, I can't remember his name. Caspius, <laughs> no, Caspius? No, it's Cas, I don't know. I think I'm season four or episode four. I don't know, I don't know, season four. Anyways, um this i think he's well he's the first roman emperor who um who became emperor through his father i believe he's the first one because typically they would sort of be um uh, like training someone or hand picking someone that wasn't even related to them and um but so he was the first and the thing is he had um two close friends because he was brought up kind of in an unusual way. He was brought up amongst um, slaves and prostitutes and all sorts of interesting things. So he had a couple friends that were like, had been freed slaves and he took them on as sort of um, advisors. But at one point, one advisor seemed to be giving him advice in terms of dealing with the Senate, which is also like, there's politics all over this too. There's politics and there's um, desire for influencing outcome on the on the table. So like, the, I think too, that's why this is coming in and there's like people in the shadows, it's all very much like this energy. So he had, um, he had quiet, like quietly or just brought one of his friends who used, of the two that used to be slaves 
and made him sort of like his official, um, his official, I don't remember what the term was, not like a secretary or something, but he gave him a ring that has a seal on it, the emperor's seal. So basically anything that would be written by this friend, you could say is coming from the emperor too. But in the shadows, behind the curtain in the scene was his other friend who was also, had been a freed slave. And I was feeling kind of like, oh, wait a second, what is going on in there? And seeing that this friend now has like power, there's something weird going on like that here because well, why why are they talking to each other i feel like i'm left out in the shadows here um this person is playing a lot of people against each other there's a really weird energy that i'm picking up they're playing a lot of people against each other and this is the other thing too it's almost like they can make each one of these people think that they're on their side but they're doing that so that they have a particular agenda that it's serving them and them only. Um, they leave people in the shadows at any time. And then I feel like they also get other people to do their dirty work for them. I don't know who this is or what this is. I'm just going to keep channeling it because it's channeling smoothly. I know that I'm picking this up in the shadow. It's definitely the shadow because I'm not struggling with explaining it at all. And then I feel like it makes this person feel really good to have this kind of control over other people. I don't know what the situation or the scenario is, um, but there's definitely kind of that, there's like like backdoor dealings too, like I'm getting that with a mediator. You know, neither one of them can see what this person is doing. The other two people involved cannot see what this person is doing with their hands. Um, okay, so this is who they really are. It makes them feel good. It makes them feel so good to do this. This is This energy is just so terrible, it's so deceptive. And they'd like to get people in the palm of their hands. I think that's the other thing too, right? Because when you look at the size difference of this little figure in his hand, like he could easily just squeeze it and crush it. So the person that's sitting in the palm of this person's hand, will like they have something on them. That's what this person does. Like I got something on you and I'm going to save that until I really need it. And now this is the time that I need that on this person. And it could be to, to gain leverage on this person, to isolate this person, whatever's going on though. But I think what really shows up is it's highlighting for me that these two people don't know what's like really going on here okay the mask that they're hiding behind is like they're doing something for everybody this person i mean this could be someone who's who's not even intentionally trying to come off this way and they could just be a people pleaser and by being a people pleaser they're not really pleasing anybody because they're trying to um they're trying to negotiate themselves into everybody's agenda so in some ways this person could be um actually hurting themselves at the end of the day they're hurting themselves more than anyone else but it's not to say that they won't hurt people along the way on that road they definitely will but um yeah this person using the lack of money as an excuse not to move forward with life so, i don't know i mean this person could be actually doing that somehow could be in a negotiation in some way i don't have any money i can't do this you can't do this to me i don't know what that is but the Seven of Swords, the Page of Wands, and the Three of Cups. This person, this person somehow communicate with people who do have money and influence. But they make it like they're serving these people. Or the lack of, I can't do this for me, I need you to do this. I want to, there's some sort of, like there's some sort of communication that goes on here. Amongst friends, amongst even people that they haven't seen in a while. But it's covert communication. I say it's covert. I feel like whatever the intention is, is covert. Because this is a mask, this is what people see. Now, why they hide their true selves? I kind of feel like I'm getting, well, I'm getting part of the light here. It's not an opening your heart. There is a sense of dependency being rejected. And I get the, like, do you see how this all falls in line? Because the, the, even like looking at an aspect of the light in the femme fatale. So the full light of the femme fatale highlights the erotic energy of the feminine opens your heart when your dependency is rejected.
but but where I'm getting is when your dependency is rejected. That's what I'm really hearing here. And if we look at here, the shadow of the servant, using the lack of money as an excuse not to move forward with life. Like, I can't do this. And damsel in distress, waiting for a night to provide for you. Seduction by romantic illusion. Negotiating with an material motive. Like, all of these cards fall in line. They follow the same path. So, I, yeah. I don't know who this is, but there is a possibility this person could be even trying to use sexual favors. With the Knight of Wands, too, right? funny because I'm really getting everything they're just I wish I could remember wait what do we see what is his name this emperor I don't even know if what I'm reading is like how that historically correct <laughs> it is on Netflix but um just give me a second here let me see this Commodus that's it Commodus the Roman Emperor Commodus okay so because even in that his sister was trying to over overthrow him actually she's trying to assassinate him and then doing that through sexual favors with a senator <laughs> saying like this is but it like this it's like that it's even it's even like sort of like the sister i would say like kind of like that energy because she was like also working with the one in the shadow the one of the the slaves who had freed themselves in the shadow see how this is all kind of connecting together so it make like that's what I see here. So there's there's so many players on the table right now. Um, I'm actually kind of impressed with myself that I'm keeping up with it. So, okay, why they hide their two selves? Inappro inappropriate use of sensuality. Attachment to money and power. This person could also be project. I'm just hearing like projecting. This person could also be projecting that onto other people who th who they may think are getting certain things that they're not getting or that they want because that's how they would get it or that's the reason they would. I would use myself in this way because I want money and power. The Ten of Wands, the Nine of Wands, and the Fool. This person wants a fresh start at something. But the thing that's really interesting is the order that these cards are moving in. The Ten to the Nine. It should go from the, the Nine to the Ten. It's like moving backwards to a new beginning. A fresh start. So that it's almost like there's some things here that can't either. So that's the other thing that I'm picking up. Like if this is somebody dealing with someone like this, it's like it keeps moving them backwards. It feels like it moves them backwards. From a fresh start. I picked up something a little bit like that in terms of like a Lego build and somebody else is reading where it's kind of like, doing a lego that's you know like 500 pages long or i don't think it was that actually <laughs> more like 40 pages long and you know like each page is step by step and then getting to page like 30 or something like that and like something is not coming together like this doesn't fit together now it's not working and then kind of going back and retracing your steps and realize it was page nine like and it's funny because this goes from 10 to the nine it's realizing that something isn't hasn't been built properly, but it's all the way back at page nine. You're telling me I have to like take this completely apart and like go back to page nine. That's the only way you're going to be able to do this right. Like to have to be able to st almost like start fresh because this mistake has to be taken out. How this affects your relationship? So the light with the beggar confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival, awakens the spiritual authority of humanity, compassion, and self-esteem. That's really interesting because there's no self-esteem here. 
And I don't mean you, like I mean whoever this is that we're dealing with. So it kind of awakens something spiritually in you. Humility. I don't know about the compassion. Maybe you could feel sorry for this person. Like, why are they doing this? The shadow, dependency, dependence on others to the exclusion of effort. I'm going to say this. I feel like the dependence on others to the exclusion of effort is how this might be showing up, how this affects you. So it's almost like something could be in someone else's hands, regardless of how hard you try. Like it could automatically make you fall into the shadow. It doesn't matter how hard you try. And when I say fall into the shadow, it's okay. So it's kind of like you end up with the consequences here, even though you're not, you couldn't, you may not even be directly related to whatever this is. Like there's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to think of like a dozen different ways, you know, that could kind of come up in our, in our lives. Right. Um, I'm actually, I keep seeing sort of like, like little kids that get in trouble at school or something. And it's almost like, you know, if you were in the wrong place at the wrong time or you got pulled into something, but you didn't actually do anything or, but you're, you're now in the group. It's not, it's not, I'm not, but it's not quite, it's not really like a group. I got the hanged man, the four of wands and the three of wands. See, the thing that I get why I'm feeling like this is falling into something of the shadow with how this affects your relationship is because the three of wands to me is I'm just kind of hearing like leaves you wanting or leaves you expecting or leaves you looking or leaves you hoping. That This is like there's nothing you can do at this point with the three of wands. You've done whatever you can do. Like now all you can really do is just sit and wait. Your ship will come in. And then I kind of feel like in the meantime with the hanged man, which I think is called the hanged one. And it's interesting because you don't even see the hanged man. You are the hanged man in this card. So this is like your perspective looking outside of this and everything is upside down. It's even feeling like everything is upside down. And I'm the four of wands, like to celebrate, to have a good time. But you have to wait because there's something i really feel like that this is falling in the shadow with these tarot cards that you're dependent on on someone else or something else regardless of how much effort you put in you know even if it's like let's say like selling your house i mean you're just kind of dependent on the right person coming in at the right time to buy it or you know i mean like if you were or you were negotiating something or you're splitting up assets or whatever. At some point, like lawyers are involved, maybe real estate agent. Like there's like all these things that kind of work outside of you. So your advice is to shape shift. And I'm going to be honest because there's so much shadow here. And then when I, after I said that, like spirit would never tell you to work in the shadow. But because this shadow, actually, when you read the shadow of this, when I look at what's on the table, I think spirit could, depending on the situation. Because this is projecting any image that serves your personal agenda in the moment. And I'll tell you right now, a personal agenda in the moment could have something to do with skirting the devil. This is like got a bit of that energy on here. It's definitely a low frequency. And it is let the devil see you how the devil wants to see you so that you can bypass and go around or whatever. I could see the divine. Okay, but now, okay, so the two, the two of wands, the four of swords, and the ace of pentacles. All right, this is giving you some power here. So shape shifting, even the shape shifting is changing your perspective. Because right now, it's like your perspective is you have no control over something that's outside of you. 
and it leaves you kind of waiting and that's not the best maybe waiting longing yearning for whatever it could be um and that's you know it's not the best energy for you to be in so okay let's also read the light skill at navigating through different levels of consciousness ability to see the potential in everything i think in this case the potential is to look away from something that you don't have any control over and focus on what you have control over which this two of wands okay because now if you look at both these cards like the two and the three of wands can be kind of looking out over things but the two but the three of wands is kind of saying that you've already done something and the payback is coming in so now it's a matter of waiting for that you know you like take the opportunity when your ship comes in and the two of wands is you haven't put anything out there yet or you're just to the universe you're almost kind of building this up but with the four of swords it is definitely looking after yourself, healing yourself, maybe even taking a break from something that you are. Like this shapeshifter has their eyes closed too. <gasps> this beggar, actually, it's like they're they're peeking. Don't peek anymore. Don't peek. <laughs> Don't peek anymore. Because eyes should be fully closed. So you're not looking at something. You'll have a completely, give yourself a completely different perspective. With this ace of pentacles this is your opportunity here to build on something mm. and the outcome is god energy that's really good so god i think should probably always be in the light um uh -huh. Benevolence and compassion, recognizing the eternal force within yourself and others. What is the shadow? Despotism and cruelty, using power to control people. Ooh, Lordy. Got the Ace of Wands. I like it because the Phoenix is right. Ah. The phoenix is rising out of her hands here. The five of cups. And then that goes into the lovers. This has a feeling. Yeah, there's something here that's. Either doesn't go the way you hope. Or would think or would perceive. But it is to kind of take your power back somehow. To take your power back? And does that occur? Just says something, right? Like, it's almost like your power's been taken away here somehow. By, if this is not a person, this is an event outside of yourself that you may have no control over. And you may not even know much about it or anything about it. I, I don't know. That could play out like that. But, you know, the phoenix is in her hand now with the ace of wands. So now that is like taking power back and God, all powerful. But because the five of cups is here into the lovers, there's definitely something here that you're left feeling disappointed about. But it's not meant to be your point of focus. The other thing that's interesting, right, like all this feminine energy, and it feels like feminine energy in a low vibration and its shadow, um, the femme fatale, uh, the damsel in distress, but then the underlying here are two masculines. So something's not right. And these two masculines are um, coming in as king energy. So they're mature, they're developed. Oh, sorry, no, it's the Knight of Cups. It's no, it's the Knight of Cups and the King of Wands. Oh, that makes sense now because now I understand that there's movement here. There's movement and intention. This King of Wands could possibly be going through some sort of a choppy storm. I don't know. Maybe the choppy storm is this. All right. 
the mediator. The mediator. The two of cups and the six of swords. I okay, so here's the thing. Again, like I'm feeling as if because here like right, it's feeling like this king of wands is going through some sort of a choppy storm. And is this someone who is important to you? Because this is someone like trying to get to a better place than the two of cups. <laughs> so I don't know what, how bad the two, like the two of cups is showing up as the place that the six of swords is trying to extricate someone from. So it could be somebody who's in a very toxic relationship they could be bound to something that's difficult here. The Ten of Swords. Let's look at that. The Knight of Wands. Actually, the Knight of Wands first. The Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands. It's kind of funny because it's the world and it came out reversed. Like there is a sense of perhaps someone trying to prolong an ending. Um... But then you get the Ten of Swords. Like, I feel like it's inevitable. The Ten of Swords. The Two of Wands and the Queen of Cups. It's kind of weird because it sort of feels like somebody might justify um, mean things they do by stating that um it could even be like some sort of shared dream here our love is built on this shared dream with the two of wands and the queen of cups but the ten of swords like no this is this, i want to say there's almost the energy of somebody fighting for an ending and somebody else trying to keep it going. The Seven of Swords, so the mask they hide behind, the Seven of Swords. The Ace of Cups, the King of Wands, and Temperance. There's the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cup was, Cups was coming up as who's, who they are, right? So it honestly feels like keeping something held back again, which is the King of Wands. Because Temperance is keeping this energy held back. So I don't know if this is somebody that you're dealing with. Something going on around them. There's really a very strong negative femme fatale. From feminine energy from very tall. The three of cups. The high priestess and the ten of wands. This person is trying to create a burden. Trying to create a burden because that ten of wands comes up and why they hide themselves right this they're either trying to create a burden to stop something um and when i say stop something it feels like stop something that no longer serves their attachment to money and power
And in some degree, I also feel like this burden is something that's possibly already been created and it's to, to keep it, like to perpetuate it, perpetualize it. This femme fatale, why they hide their true selves? Page of Wands, Seven of Pentacles. <coughs> Excuse me. Knight of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles. Oh, what was I saying? It's like there's, right, this Knight of Cups is this King of Wands. I feel like it's almost like, so I am picking this up. Like there's a masculine energy. That, I don't know. Maybe this is a masculine energy that's trying to connect with you. I have no idea. But I just, I'm really getting there's a masculine energy here. Or maybe you're this masculine energy, right? Like it's kind of one of those too. I feel like um, that is trying to move forward here. Like trying to move forward out of choppy, out of choppy waters. And, but here, this, this thing here is like this king of, the king of wands is held back here is held back here in this person using the lack of money as an excuse not to move forward with life which could be true i mean that could be how it's going on but right it's like trying to take so come up with a way come up with something to say um to communicate in some way that creates a plan here to direct that i feel like that energy that the king of wands is maybe trying to use to them and I'm getting this because the Queen of Pentacles is somebody that would be associated with money. And that's coming out with the shadow attribute in the femme fatale. And there's the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands and the Nine of Wands, it's working in the reverse. I can't. It's like this person doesn't want to release the burdens. Because the Ten of Wands shows up in the mask that they hide behind. And the Ten of Wands is showing up like why they hide their true selves. And it goes backwards from the Ten to the Nine to the Fool. The Seven of Cups. This person is trying to create emotional confusion. This person could possibly be using um, feminine energy in a very shadow. It's a very shadow based form to get an outcome for themselves it feels like it could be driven by a need to perhaps even be rescued to fulfill romantic illusions the fool oh i feel oh, okay the five of swords and the magician. I feel like that that energy could actually be um, the energy that I'm picking up in here, like sort of the masculine that's tied into this. Whether that's you, could be directly, um, or somebody like close to you, and is trying to manifest like an ending in that. And then how this affects your relationship. The beggar. I So here's the other thing, because it feels like with this energy, this shadow feminine energy on the table, that it comes off as the one in need. And then as soon as they get that fulfilled through some sort of manipulation or control, the person that they're, that really actually has the power or has has the power the um the control ah yes uh the influence the money they become the one in needs i don't know if that's you or what this is but right because dependency on the others to the exclusion of effort where it's something out of your control because then that's kind of bringing me back to commodos commodo commodos commodore commodore 64 <laughs> um the emperor and um that senator that was sleeping with his sister. The senator ended up, so I don't know if you haven't watched it anyways, he had a, to tune me out or pause it or I don't know what, but because it's kind of important. Um, he ended up taking the fall initially for um, trying to assassinate her brother. So right, like he becomes the one in trouble 
when if he had never gotten involved, because these were her visions of grandeur, she wanted power through, like, it's like um, the system working against itself. Ah, yeah. So, the beggar. The Queen of Wands and the Four of Wands. Oh, see, that's self-empowerment because that's what you need to do over here. That's part of the advice. Because right now, right, like it's the, the hanged one with the Four of Wands and the Three of Wands, like looking, observing. Oh, that was Lily, she just took a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Shapeshifter, that's the advice for you is to shapeshift. Oh shit, the devil into the wheel of fortune. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is. And I believe too, I believe because of that energy and the way the shadow can be read specifically in this case, that you would be guided to, to use the shapeshifter in shadow if you needed to. Projecting any image that serves your personal agenda in the moment because you need to to get out of whatever this is When in Rome Roman emperors right get it uh -huh. But that's also like you know where the toga dress as a Roman does so when in hell Dress as the devil does and then you won't stick out like a sore thumb and nobody gonna pay any attention Two of Wands, Four of Swords. Oh, this is so interesting. Because now you're getting the Five of Wands with this King of Pentacles. I'm telling you, there's a masculine energy. And I don't know if it's you. I don't think like it, it is you, though. I don't know. Maybe it is. Because this person is looking out for something, right? But it is not. Well, it is. It's like, look at this. There's, there's the one that I would say would be connected to the, this femme fatale here. See how that came out? If this is a friend of yours, if this is a, a possible romantic partner, if this is a business partner, any way this could come out. I feel like they're wrapped up in something and you, know, you look the other way. You look the other way. Focus on healing and even some, some sort of new beginning for you, creating something here. Let's, let's look at that. Let's focus on literally your advice. The Four of Swords. Because there's conflict around the King of Pentacles. I kind of like the way the hanged man, he's um, upright, actually came out first into the Three of Swords. But I will read it because I, you know, typically I don't read reversals. Um, but yeah, so this is actually, I want to say there's something f in your life that needs healing, but it actually may not be you. <laughs> That's the funny thing here, because an ace of pentacles doesn't have anything to do with you. Like it could have something to do with an opportunity in your life. It could have something to do with some sort of physical thing that you should be growing or investing in. The ace of pentacles. The Nine of Wands, the Fool, the Ten, the Ten of Pentacles into the Moon. There's something here that you, maybe that's been like prolonging for you. Maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's a new home. Maybe it's a new car. Maybe it's a raise. I don't know. But if whatever it is, you get this new opportunity and you run with it. Who knows where it'll take you after that? I don't know. It's left to be determined. But it's literally like there's some sort of healing, but this he it's funny because this healing is not coming through as something you need to do for yourself. It's in some aspect of your life. And then the outcome, God. He got the judgment card. God is in control of this shit. Don't you worry about it. Whatever that is, judgment, judgment. The Ace of Wands, and there it is. Rising, the where did that go? The Ace of Wands came out with the Ace of Wands. The Five of Cups. 
The six of wands, give your, give whatever this problem is, give it up to the universe. If there's something in your life that you need to heal. But I feel like it's like a project or to build something up and it could even be financial. And the lovers. Holy crap. The king of cups, the eight of cups, the five of cups, and the seven of swords. Wow. Yeah, I think you have to like distance yourself emotionally from something. It may not be the thing that you really want to do, but because it's the seven of swords, <laughs> so you're almost being given some like, on the surface, it could look like you're distant. I don't know. Or yeah, the four page, yeah, do something creative here. The lovers, the page of cups and the four of swords. So just give something a rest. But give something else your attention. You know what I'm saying? Wow, this is something. Something, something. I'm going to go do the extended. Oh, I don't know. No, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing I did for you that I did for Virgo. Um, Virgo's was much more upfront. Like, that was shadow nasty shit. That person was living a complete lie. So there's a remnant of this. If you could, if you think you could be dealing with a Virgo, or if this is somebody that could be dealing with someone else, and that might be a Virgo, it's possible because you got the Queen of Pentacles here. Um, you might want to go watch that reading. But just be forewarned, there's a lot of naughty language in it, and it was just I just channeled it. So you know what? Yeah. Um. Hmm. Oh yeah. So coming <laughs> with this. Because for the extendants I've been doing, like whoever we're picking up on, what um, what they would tell you if you could. I don't want this person to talk to you, to be quite honest. Like kind of like Virgo, I wouldn't even trust it. So um, I'm going to get your highest level um, guide, your highest level spirit guide to ask them come in and um, talk to you in the extended. We're going to see what they would tell you right now, um, why that hasn't been said to you up to this point yet. And then their deepest thoughts about you and whatever situation you're in. Thank you, Aquarius. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.